So distributivity means you substitute instead of a vector a sum of two vectors and then volume is computed as a sum of two volumes. And you can do it for any of the three vectors. That's what it means now. For the first, for the second, or for the third. In any place you can consider a vector as a sum and then distribute. So that looks, uh, that makes volume look like a product of three things. That's how you should think about it. You sort of multiply three vectors together. And if you multiply three things together, you think of u times v times the sum. Well then, of course, you distribute this sum by, by multiplying u times v times q plus u times v times w. So that makes algebra easy or easier to think about. If you just keep thinking of volume as a product of three those things. Now that's our expectation at this point. Why is it true? So let me let's start staring at this picture. Uh, so the picture has two vectors, blue and green. And those are fixed. And then the third vector, this yellow vector, is going to be replaced by two other vectors, and those two make yellow as a sum. And what, I'm want, what I want to check is that the volume on these two blue and green together with the yellow is equal to the sum of volumes blue and green together with the red one plus blue and green together with the purple one. Okay. Now, what is the volume on blue, green, and the yellow? What is the volume of that parallel pipette, the long one? You see those faces of long parallel pipette. And then, the volume on blue, green, and the red one is that tilted parallel pipette. The volume on these two and the purple is another tilted parallel pivot. And the reason why the sum of volumes of these two is equal to the volume of the straight tall parallel pivot is that you can think of the tall one as, uh, think of stack of, uh, of cards. And then you push it in the middle, like right here. And then all the cards are pushed and they make this shape, but the volume is still the same. You never remove or add any card. So that's the reason, geometric explanation of why distributivity holds. And once you have this very convincing argument, you start to believe that, yes, distributivity holds, and that's the end of it. So that makes the volume an algebraic concept that you can, first of all, effectively compute. So let's do that first. Because <coughs> that's the first promise of algebra, being available to compute. So what you want is, you want to compute volume of parallel pivot on any three vectors, u, v, and w. In terms of what? Well, of course, in terms of coordinates of those vectors. Right? Coordinates of u, coordinates of v, coordinates of w. How many of those? Three here, three there, three there. So you expect nine numbers to float around. And you should not expect the n formula to be very simple, having like two, maybe four terms at most. Right? It will depend essentially on all the coordinates, all nine. It cannot be very simple, very short. So. Don't hope for something very simple, simple <clears throat> but uh, how to proceed with the computations? Well, you express, well, it's the same as we did for the plane. Express each vector u 
as sum of three basic vectors. Remember those i, j, and k, the unit vectors along the axis? All right, so u1 is coordinate along x-axis multiplied by i makes one basic vector. And then you do the same with v and w. And then you expand. And then you expand. Expanding means what? Distributivity, right? You distribute that product, and then you distribute, and then you distribute, and then you distribute, and you distribute even more. And somewhere in the middle, you may want to do intermediate computations, just to simplify things, not dragging the whole product page over page. Uh, basically, what you want is to simplify it by cancelling. Right? And a lot of things are going to cancel. So look at this one. Volume on J, K, K. What can you think about that volume? Isn't that zero? If you take a vector twice, add another one, you are not adding any volume. So that is zero. So where are those numbers? Well, those numbers are all factored because of the second rule, right? So use the second rule to factor, use distributivity to expand to those simple terms, uh, factor the constants out, and then hope to use the first rule to cancel those that are zero. And then you don't give up, and you expand even more. And finally, somewhere out there, you'll get this beautiful formula, six terms, all together with different signs. And that's the one you will have to memorize. Because that's the formula, that's the final algebraic outcome of what the volume is.